What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking about the ever-dominant Zap Quake. Um, you'd think that I could stop making videos because people would figure out how to defend it. I wouldn't have to cover it anymore. Not the case, and we're gonna talk a little bit more detailed about why it's working and what types of attacks are pairing well with it, and this will kind of help you guys also defend it too. Um, Town Hall 13, this is a strategy that this opponent clan used a ton where they're zapping down the clan castle, then they're using the royal champion to kind of clear out any defenses that are near the CC. Then they're kind of using adjacently the king, queen for a little bit of a Sui action, and that feeds into either a Lalo or in this case dragons, the town hall being exposed. Um, so really what's being taken advantage of here is a couple of things. First, the fact that the Town Hall doesn't activate until 50%, that allows the um, Royal Champion to kind of sneak in there, take out some defenses without actually activating it, and then the um, a Siege Machine can take it out later on. That's one thing. Also taking advantage of um, when you zap down the Clan Castle, typically there's like a little layer of defenses, um, but that is all pretty easy to take out. Most people don't load a lot of uh, high-powered defensive buildings right by their clan castle and for good reason because you could zap that down too so it's kind of a catch-22 where you can't put a lot near your clan castle because it'll get zapped down but once it gets zapped down if there's not a whole lot in the area you can easily be picked off with the royal champion um, so that's working really well plus the Sui hero pairs really nicely because the clan castles down there's no lava hound to come out and make it difficult for the queen anything like that and also, um, there's like one side of a funnel, so the heroes can are very easy to put where you want. Um, now, what's being paired really nicely also is this Lava Hound Sneaky Goblin combination in the clan castle in that blimp. Um, you guys have seen this before if you watch my channel. Basically, it's dropping down that blimp, and um, the five Sneaky Goblins are enough to kill the town hall. Lava Hound comes out and also tanks an air defense for the air attack. In this case, it's dragons. Plenty of dragons left up. This is a very nice attack, very well planned. Shout out to this clan for getting a perfect war against us. Um, I was, I think, still out of town when this war happened, so I was not in it. Um, I'm not sure if the result would have been any different had I been. Uh, both clans, good attacks all around, but they uh, got that perfect war, which is hard to, hard to respond to. Moving right along, we're going to take a look at a lot of attacks today, so I'll do my best to fast forward here and there. Mainly going to highlight how the Zap Quake is being used. Um, this is once again another Town Hall 13 attack and another great use of it. Um, spreading out those lightnings to get the damage as evenly as possible. The idea is you don't want to you know, waste the Zaps, uh, all seven of them, on buildings that are not going to require seven Zaps. You can spread them out as long as they all touch that clan castle in some sense. Uh, you can do more damage overall. Um, so it gets that down, suing in the king, queen, uh, take out some defenses, and then the royal champion coming in as well to clear some stuff out. Sa this is almost the exact same attack strategy as we saw last time, just paired with a Lalo instead of dragons in this case. Um, so getting value from the heroes, from the royal champion, town hall not activated. The queen actually would have got much more value had she gone over here. There's a single inferno, a scatter shot, bunch of stuff. Instead, she's going to go for the town hall, which really isn't necessary because the blimp can easily take that down. And the reason you don't put like balloons in the blimp, the reason you're putting a lava hound and five sneaky goblins, is that when the, the town hall is destroyed and it explodes, it'll kill all those balloons or whatever else you put in there. So you might as well bring a lava hound, which really won't be affected as much by that town hall explosion. And I think it gets away in time anyway, so it doesn't even feel any damage from it. Um, and just sacrifice those five 15 troop space total sneaky goblins. Much better investment than bringing balloons and having them all crash and burn once the town hall goes down. Um, so the Lalo was made a little more difficult by this part of the base still being up. Uh, the um, scatter shot and single inferno, but has a nice freeze for it. And uh, plenty of Lalo. Queen is still alive because... Um, the Lala was started nice and early, allowing her to stay up. Good stuff. We'll fast forward. Um, you guys get the picture as uh, things wrap up here. Queen's ability still left to the end of the attack. Very nice. All right. Uh, we have one more Town Hall 13. Then we'll move down Town Hall 12, Town Hall 11. Um, I'll have to be reminded about what this attack strategy was. 
it might have been the same thing once again. Um, if anything, this shows at Town Hall 13, you really want to make sure that your clan castle is not near any other buildings. And that's something I always try to do in my Town Hall 13 base builds. Uh, in this case, it looks like it actually was the eagle that was uh, zapped down along with the scatter shot. So eagle, clan castle, just d the zap value is very easy to not give if you just don't put buildings next to each other. It makes it a little bit harder to build a base because things have to be more spread out. There's all these, it's like a Sudoku game almost. There's all these things that can't go together. You have to, you know, get everything to fit, fit together perfectly. Um, you know, not giving too much zap value to any one use of it. But um, if you can do it, it works. In this case, we're doing a queen charge. It's a little bit different. Queen charge paired with the zap quake is doable, despite what you might think. Um, you're so limited on spells, but in this case, because the eagle, scatter shot, some other buildings taken down, the queen charge is a little bit simplified, only requires one rage and one freeze. Plus, the uh, tricky walls in this case are uh, a little helping hand to the attack, allowing the king to come in grab the uh, scatter shot even. Um, so great value from the king here in terms of funneling the queen. Nice little uh, super wall breaker coming in. Just kind of a textbook queen charge. Very, very well done all around. Um, maybe a little bit lucky even. Depends how you look at it. But gets the job done here. And then the Lalo is just going to be exceedingly easy from all the value that was gotten. I mean, there's really not much of the base left up. I mean, look at that shape. It's like perfect for a Lalo pathing. Once again, same thing, um, five sneaky goblins, not going to be targeted by the town hall until it's too late, town hall's already down, free lava hound comes out, and then look at this, I mean this is even better, these healers coming over tanking, um, if you ever are doing a queen charged Lalo, it's not a bad idea to bring a wizard for cleanup, because sometimes your queen will die, and you know, you'll have five full health healers just sitting there, if you can lure them across the base, they can tank for your uh, Lalo, and they're you know pretty much the same thing as a Lava Hound, if not better, um, in terms of how well they can tank. So bring that wizard, pull all that healer space over. In this case, I think it locked on to a Headhunter, which was interesting. Fast forward, like I said, we got other attacks to get to. Um, getting lost in these beautiful attacks, even though they are the opponent clan. Let's hop over, take a look at some of our hits. Uh, gonna focus on Town Hall 12 and 11 on our side. This first one here is a nice little four zap uh, action. Coming in here, just luring out the CC with a few balloons, getting a Tesla taken out. Has that Inferno Dragon and some other good stuff, some Headhunters, gonna pull it up to the top here. Pretty classic Clan Castle lure. Go ahead and fast forward and look at that. Um, that was a really nice technique, getting the lightnings on the headhunters and even the inferno dragon. So all that comes up is like a half health inferno dragon. But in this case, the way the zaps were so effective is that this multi inferno and sweeper, which was sitting in the middle of the base, um, just by positioning where it was, so much value was being given to that defensive building. And that's kind of one of the main points of this video is inherent in how you set up your base is what defenses you are valuing the most. If it's the Eagle, which is very isolated, if it's the Multi Inferno, which is also very isolated, by virtue of putting it right in the center and having it very difficult to get to, you're now giving much more value to that building. So by being able to zap it down, you're giving much more value to the attacker. Just as if you have your clan castle um, kind of guarding the town hall, the clan castle is now a much more uh, weighted building than it otherwise would be. So a big part of base building today is taking these buildings that are valuable, um, you know, regardless of where they are, the clan castle, the eagle, inferno towers, etc., and putting them in positions where they're not necessarily in the most valuable spot. Maybe your expos are actually um, being treated as a more valuable defense. So it kind of evens things out. Now the, the zap value just isn't going to be there because um, you're not going to get that same positioning taken out, even if you get the same defensive value. I mean, there's bases out there um, where the Eagle and Clan Castle can be right next to each other, so you can zap them both down together, but even still, it's not going to be worth it just because of how the base is set up. Anyway, in this case, the Lalo uh, works very nicely. What was left up was just a nice little ring for the Lalo to path through, as you can see there. 
like I said, the multi-inferno was kind of the supposed to be that deal breaker for a lot of attacks, and by taking it out, it opened up so much for this base. Nice little blimp with, in this case, at Town Hall 12, a dragon and some balloons. You can't bring the uh, sneaky goblins, don't have enough troop space to get it done, so uh, it brings the dragon loons, good combo to take out the Town Hall at Town Hall 12, and then the Lala just kind of spreads around the rest of it. Nice few freezes to finish things off, and uh, GG's to that attack. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, just down one to number 11 here. This one pairing it up with a Queen Charge Miners. And at Town Hall 12, I think more than any Town Hall level, you can pair nicely the Zap Quake with the Queen Charge. Reason being, the six uh, Lightnings plus the Earthquake can take down the clan castle. That is something that's unique to Town Hall uh, 12. At Town Hall 11, unless you kind of bring max spells in your clan castle, that might work. But by and large, at Town Hall 11 and 13, as far as I know, definitely at Town Hall 13, you, you have to bring that one extra spell space, which makes it so you can't bring the three heals slash rages, those two spell space spells. You can bring three of them at Town Hall 12, in addition to being able to zap Quake down the clan castle, and in this case, gets the Inferno Tower as well. I also noticed that uh, it looked like the Earthquake was used before the Lightning Spells. I'm not sure if there's any benefit to that. Maybe let me know in the comments uh, if you guys have any insight to that. My understanding has always been you drop the Earthquake Spell last, but I'm not sure if it really makes a difference or not. Uh, if it's just one Earthquake Spell. So, I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll see. Let me know if you know the answer to that. Anyway, though, uh, once again, the key to this attack is that the lightning spell is taking out Inferno Tower, Clan Castle, which would have made this queen charge otherwise impossible. Just makes it so there's one layer for the queen to take out initially. Then she walks over, Super Wall Breaker opens it up, boom, Eagle Town Hall. It's all right there. So it's not always that inherent value you're getting but it's what is set up by virtue of having taken out that very strategic part of the base. And in this case, taking out the clan castle and front tower really crippled the base, not just because of that value, which you know in itself is good. You never wanna, as a base builder, put those two buildings next to each other, um, but also having that queen charge available to s sneak in there, get the town hall, get the eagle um, for a very cheap queen charge. And then the hybrid is kind of beside the point at this point, so. Um, things will move through. We will go times four uh, as these miners finish off the base. Things start to peter out a little bit, but the queen is still alive, and that's uh, typically enough to get it done at the end of the attack. GG's to MGK, and I think, are we on to Town Hall 11? I think we are. Here we go, number 21. I believe this is our first Town Hall 11 hit. Yes, it is. Pairing it up with the dragons, and this is a little bit different. We're not using all the, the lightning earthquakes in one place. And check this out. Gets um, the earthquake to take out both air defenses. Now that is something that's really special because you're saving one spell space by being able to do that. In this case, freeze up a poison spell um, as the free spell there. But the, the idea is uh, it takes two lightnings and one earthquake to take down the air defense. If you're able to have these uh, air defenses just relatively close, I mean these two were not even that close to each other there and there, but if they're just relatively close, you can you can drop the two lightning spells on each of them, and then the earthquake spell can take out both of them combined, save you a spell space. Um, excuse me. Very uh, very simple stuff there. So um, very lucky how the lava hound goes to the king here. That's something I noticed when I watched this the first time. Um, you will often not get that lucky, but in this case he does. Basically setting up a nice funnel here. It's a very wide entry for the dragons, but typically that's how you want it for this type of attack. It's different than a drag bat, where it's more of a narrow entry, then the bats are going to kind of sweep around. In this case, the dragons are it. I mean, that's all you got. You're uh, relying on having taken out a lot of the main damage dealers in the air defenses and other important buildings. So you want to spread your dragons more so they're able to kind of get to each of those defenses as quickly as possible and be as efficient as possible as they move through. And in this case, there's enough of them still up in the core with that rage. Um, the slammer is going to be pretty much untouched throughout the base here. So 
gets it done uh, with dragons to spare. We'll fast forward. Nice hit, and then we'll move on to our final attack of the video. I hope you guys like the new background music, by the way. Um, went ahead and tried something new. Let me know what you think, as opposed to the last background music. Uh, let's see, last one. 32. There it is. And uh, has the... Okay, this is the two max lightning spells. So, I think this is going to work. Drops it um, on the clan castle. Gets it taken out. Yeah, so six lightning spells plus the earthquake. Uh, if you bring two max lightning spells, it looks like it is enough to take down at least the clan castle at Town Hall 11. So, you can save that spell space like you can at Town Hall 12 by bringing the max lightning spells. Also, I had to do that uh, sound effect at least once this video. So there it is. Had to get out of my system. Uh, better late than never. And then what this really sets up, once again, is, of course, it's great value getting the Clan Castle and the Multi-Inferno, which, once again, you should never put next to each other as a base builder. But um, it's the Siri value that kind of makes the attack here, which is made possible by the Lightning Spells. Um, but is not, you know, a product directly of lightning spells. Um, ton of value. I would have even maybe opted for a blimp to kind of get in there and get that uh, eagle sooner than everything, because the eagle is so deep in the base right there. That's going to be the main issue when you're going through for this Lalo, especially with the sweeper pushing things away from it. So that might have been the one thing I would have done as opposed to bringing the slammer, but the slammer is going to get good value also. You can't argue with that. Um, and the balloons will make their way to the eagle. It just takes a long time. So, uh, you know, pick your poison, I guess. Or I guess in this case, pick your siege machine. Both of them probably would have worked nicely. This, in this case, this one does work. Uh, so we will fast forward. Dragon coming out of the, of the uh, stone slammer. The queen actually is alive to take out the eagle. So she set up the entire attack. Just shows how great this Sui hero action was for this attack. Long video today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um... The lightning spell is dominating as ever, and of course, if you're a Town Hall 11, you know what it can do with those witches, you know, zapping down both Inferno Towers, then just mass witching a base. Um, and also at Town Hall 13, I myself have been having success with that uh, video I posted, a, you know, like a month ago on the 5 lightning spell, 4 earthquake, witch, uh, golem, bowler spam, which has been crushing at Town Hall 13. So... In more ways than how you just saw in this video, it's been working. Check out those last videos if you haven't already to see how these other ways you can use it. But that's it, guys. Make your bases better. Um, don't have this stuff happen to your bases. If you want your own custom war bases, as described above, check out the Patreon. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, ISECT, in the settings tab of your game and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time. Bisectatron out.